from Tallinn. Uh, I represent basically two organizations uh, because, well, I will just say it. Um, Estonian Urban Lab is one that is kind of professional organization, a bit similar to what also Ekaterina does. It's an uh, independent um, urban competence center. We operate as NGO. Uh, we deal a lot with participatory planning, meaning that we work also with communities. And the kind of story I'm going to tell today is uh, concerning a particular kind of um, um, kind of uh, field that we do uh, with neighborhood associations. So I'm talking about um, territorial communities that are based in certain areas, not like social communities who are like maybe cross border uh, or such. Okay. Um, as you can see, this is the neighborhood that uh, I will talk about mostly. Uh, it's the biggest kind of housing area in Thailand. Uh, let's say it's uh, even, I think, the largest kind of housing area in Baltics, at least at some point. Um, it's uh, 120,000 people. So it's a bit difficult to actually talk about it uh, as a community because it's not homogenic. It's very different. Uh, I'm also myself from that neighborhood. <laughs> so, um, uh, but as a like uh, background story, uh, why we started to work with neighborhood associations. Actually, uh, neighborhood stations in uh, Tallinn are quite strong. As you can see, this is Tallinn. Uh, basically, the whole city is covered by different uh, small and bigger neighborhood stations. Some district might have even uh, more than one, meaning that there's also like different uh, opinions and different groups like forming. So they are all uh, citizen-based, they are all comprised of residents themselves, so meaning they come from different backgrounds. So they, uh, and all these are actually also for, uh, operating as NGOs, so they are organized communities. Uh, they are not at the same time representatives of the whole neighborhood, the representatives of their own community that they decided to form. Uh, it was a project in 2013, so sorry, it's not 2003, but 13. Uh, about over 20 neighborhood stations are in Tallinn. Uh, and the Estonian Urban Lab decided that it's time to maybe uh, create a network between all of those uh, neighborhood stations that actually share a lot of knowledge. Uh, and uh, there should be some shared values and maybe uh, empowering everyone uh, in a more broader sense. Uh, and uh, you can also see from here, um, it's very detailed, but just to give an overview that actually uh, some neighborhood stations date back from uh, like beginning of 20th century, so they're very historical, and some just brought out in uh, 2000. Uh, there was a, a second wave of uh, creation of neighborhood station at that time. So they also have different um, kind of focuses. Some are more concerning uh, cultural activities in the neighborhood. Others are protesting for new developments to preserve their heritage protection. <coughs> so they're very different. Uh, if you're like interested more, uh, we actually have a publication that we issue regularly. This is the 15th edition of uh, uh, Urbanist Review. It's an online uh, journal. So if you can just put in your website, you can also um, just read more about all this neighborhood association uh, background in Tallinn and beyond. Uh, so when we come back to this uh, map, uh, you can see that there are like big actually gaps. You can see that uh, this neighborhood here and those, they don't have, some, they're not covered by or the uh, community initiatives are kind of not visible there. Um, and these neighborhoods are exactly the panel housing areas. So that's uh, why we decided to, to concentrate our attention to these neighborhoods. And since I'm myself from this Lasnama neighborhood, we decided to kind of um, experiment uh, why there is no visible uh, citizen in, uh, initiations like all over other places of Tallinn. Is it because the uh, typology of the neighborhood? We talk a lot about panel housing areas being uh, alienating. Uh, being like uh, too monotonous, not a good living environment. This is a discussion that we have uh, about sleeping districts in Tallinn. I have a feeling that in Vilnius it's more neutral than in Tallinn. So yes, this is how uh, the initiative started in 2014. I was uh, the project manager uh, at that point. 
So the challenges that we were facing, as I have been saying also, that it's actually a huge neighborhood. It's, uh, if it would be a separate unit, like a separate city, it would be the second largest city in Estonia. So you can imagine the magnitude that we have, right? Uh, also, the um, uh, specifics about this neighborhood is that its um, majority is actually Russian-speaking population. Uh, so we have actually two places of uh, Russian-speaking concentration. One is Narva, it's on the border, eastern border of Estonia, and then we have Lasnama. So we always talk, like in media, there's a lot of talks about segregation also, about those Estonian-Russian uh, national problems and so on. So all the discussions so far about Lasnama, if you uh, go to the news, are about this kind of national problems as well. Uh, also, it's very specific that uh, last time is actually unrealized uh, Soviet plan. Uh, Soviet, when the Soviet Union collapsed, uh, last time was unbuilt. So there's a lot of uh, kind of um, natural greenlands still present there because the development was not realized. And mostly it's concerning social infrastructure, which creates a lot of tensions as well, because people do have places to sleep and shop, but not places to actually gather. And they are not distributed equally. So the first part of Last Nama does have some social infrastructure, but the second part doesn't have any. So that's also the problems. Uh, and that's why you can consider it uh, monofunctional, of course. Um, as I mentioned, it's considered also like undesirable place. People don't want to live there. It's not, yeah. Uh, not the image of a desirable place to live. Uh, it has a lot of stigmas, and uh, uh, that's why also it's used in a lot of political games. Uh, every time that there are uh, municipal elections or uh, national elections, last time I mentioned as this, uh, you know, they say like um, the um, political parties play the Russian card. So we are, have a certain political party that is more concentrated on Russian speakers. And uh, so they get, get their most votes from Lasnama. So a lot of people are like angry that oh, Lasnama decides about the whole talent, about some kind of uh, political power games. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, more colorful picture, <laughs> there are opportunities. Uh, and uh, why uh, I was very passionate about this project is because I was personally fed up about uh, my neighborhood being treated in this way because um, I saw a lot of other opportunities and values. So uh, one of them is that the um, neighborhood is actually very youthful because uh, it was also the last one to be built in, uh, in, in Tallinn. And also it has a very good uh, infrastructure in terms of mobility. It's very close to the city center. Actually, it takes like five, ten minutes uh, by bicycle or by car, by public transport to reach some of the places. So uh, it actually has this also, also the services and education facilities, so kindergartens and schools, so it's really good for young families. Because it wasn't built, we have places for new developments. So actually a lot of new uh, modern, um, um, let's say, uh, residential blocks are being built, which have already modern, like, uh, different... Um, uh, you know, plans, so uh, young families that don't want to have the old Soviet planning or ma are more like um, eager to have the open plan can have uh, a room here in Lasnama with this uh, public uh, rapid transport, so it's a really desirable place and it's also affordable to live there. Uh, and also because, again, it wasn't developed uh, till the end, it still has a lot of vast green spaces so actually there is a lot of stuff that you can work with. Uh, we also have quite uh, mixed uh, cultural uh, diversity there. Uh, we can say like also in the media, um, there's a Russian uh, neighborhood, but Russian is actually, why I, I'm saying Russian speakers, because they're Ukrainians, they're Belarus, they're um, from Georgia, they're all around uh, people uh, from uh, Korea. So actually it's a very mixed neighborhood. <clears throat> Yes, so these are uh, just a few examples of uh, how I always say that uh, or argue that um, the neighborhood is not monotonous, it's not homogeneous, it actually has a lot of uh, diversity, but it's in micro level. Of course, if you, you know, remember the picture with the challenges, it's taken photograph from above, but people don't fly like a bird usually, right? <laughs> they go on the streets, they use uh, the space on a uh, human level. So actually we have a lot of diversity. When I went to uh, last night to visit, I saw that you have those uh, micro shops more on the first level of uh, the houses. We have them in the basements. So these places were not meant for uh, um, 
uh, services, uh, but people have uh, uh, demand for this kind of places, so people start to have their small micro businesses there, and they are very varied. Uh, they are like uh, shoe repairmen. Uh, there is some maybe bar. There is a beauty salon. So there is a lot of um, activities going on, and each place is initially uh, the same, you know, with the structure, the typology. But everyone wants to make it individual, make it different. So actually, it's also a way how people um, appropriate the space. Uh, Another example, well, you can see it basically everywhere, but people really want to take care of their place. It means that they actually enjoy where they live and they want to make it better. They make small steps towards it, but this is actually very important. It's small, maybe it seems insignificant. This is something that should be encouraged more and more. So uh, the approach uh, of last night, this is the neighborhood community that we initiated in this uh, uh, district. So this is the an another NGO that I'm presenting. Uh, it's uh, an organization uh, of residents there. Uh, we are very different. We are uh, also different age groups, different social backgrounds, um, you know, education and so on. But we decided about certain approaches and values that we all share. Um, so coming back to what Sebastian said, that you have to really talk through all of this. And we had a lot of also arguments. But one of the things and messages that we uh, decided to share is that Las Nama uh, has its good stuff and bad stuff, like every neighborhood. It's actually a normal place to live. You don't have to demonize it in a certain way. And also that uh, the different language that we speak there, you know, this Russian Estonian stuff, is actually not a barrier because you have a shared goal. Everyone wants to live better. So if you put this as a shared, um, you know, uh, goal, then everything else becomes like secondary. Uh, so what we do, what we are doing is uh, we're trying to change the perception of Las Nama to create more reason to talk about it in a more positive way. We're engaging a lot of re residents. So our team is 10 people, but we are engaging uh, a larger groups. Of course, we cannot cover 120,000 people, but it's um, it's an experiment, right? Uh, we do certain like smaller interventions. We do a lot of prototyping. Uh, we are collaborating uh, strategically now with municipality and our very good uh, and important partners, uh, partners are also housing cooperatives. We have quite strong housing cooperatives. Uh, from this year, it's obliged to, for every house to have one as well. So they are legally uh, you know, structured, uh, quite strong entities. And yes, as I said, we're focusing a lot of, uh, on exactly mutual interest. We're not talking, for example, about education, which is usually one of this kind of um, elephant in the room, uh, because we have this uh, system of Russian schools to be reformed to Estonian language. So for example, we don't talk about it. We don't talk about politics, about Crimea, or so on, because that's not important in this case. And it doesn't unite us. Uh, so, uh, some examples, so kind of a toolbox uh, about how to create awareness about the space. So, we, cre uh, we organize uh, urban walks, we call them. They could be by bike, uh, by public transport, uh, whatever. We talk to locals and to people uh, outside of Las Nama about um, how it has been developed, what were the ideas behind the grand master plan of Soviet time. It's actually quite marvelous uh, to, if you, you know, go into it. Uh, to uh, show some kind of surprising places for people, like some very specific courtyards, uh, some interesting, um, you know, objects. Uh, we, uh, one second. Uh, we do also cultural events, um, like um, in many cases, uh, I believe it's not very surprising. Uh, we are not doing that much street uh, festivals, for example, because they tend to um, be very commercial at some point. But what we do uh, every year right now for four years are uh, open air screenings, which are for free to everyone. We choose different locations to actually show also the values of public space that we have. And we also host um, discussions before the screening on some important social topics that we have. So we are engaging also the public uh, in this way that it's kind of... Um, uh, we are checked through film, but we actually then engage them as well that they would not normally uh, do. Uh, it's also um, important to have some visible changes, uh, some like really down to ground um, uh, interventions. 
So we do some street art, but we don't do it in a way that we invite some street artists to do something for us. We actually create, for example, like in this um, uh, example, a very a uh, simple pattern that everyone could follow. So uh, we did it for two days. Everyone, every passerby, it could be a child, it could be an elderly person, whoever could just paint one triangle or half of the triangle or stay with us for the whole day. And it will become like a collaborative effort. Uh, also, we have done uh, some street uh, furniture workshops. Uh, and now one of our kind of biggest long-term projects is also urban gardening. Uh, we also uh, try to uh, have uh, strategic engagement. Uh, so, for example, uh, last um, autumn we chose one smaller neighborhood in our um, bigger district and gathered all the people from that uh, area to discuss the problems that uh, concerning uh, security especially. Uh, and we did it in two phases. So first phase was only with the residents and in the second meeting with an invited representative from municipality, police, uh, fire department and so on. And that was important because people usually uh, don't have the habit to negotiate that much uh, and to have this culture of uh, discussion. So it was very important in the first phase to let them just talk about everything that they want to uh, try to create some kind of... Um, uh, already ideas and then to, to present them and uh, search for solution in the second phase. So it's a, a longer process, uh, it takes more time but it's uh, actually very rewarding and now they're uh, doing these meetings on their own so it wasn't just like one time thing. Okay that's it. <laughs> <laughs>